goats are considered the third smartest group of mammals because they understand complex language. So goats are wicked smart, you guys. I mean, like I'm talking to you, they know and understand as well as you and I sitting here conversing, understand each other. And I would say... On Connecting the Dots, we aim to redefine what the term healthy means by learning from experts, identifying different areas of our life that impact our well-being, and becoming our greatest health advocates. We believe that by making small lifestyle changes, people can not only manage, but also prevent a wide range of chronic illnesses we are taught to believe are normal in our society today. My name's Kathleen Carney. I'm a nutritionist, foodie, author, and creator and co-host of this raw, real, and sometimes ridiculous show. And I'm Melissa Chamis, the other half of Connecting the Dots. I'm also a certified yoga instructor, Reiki One practitioner, and a hustler just trying to survive in corporate America. We are close friends who bonded over our messy healing journeys and are eager to share our experiences with you. So come join this journey with us as we all learn to connect the dots between the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of being human. We now know that 80% of the reason why people go to the doctor's office is because of stress. It's a stress-induced illness. So if we want to be working on healing the body, the gut and the brain have to work on together. People get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Never accept that, oh, I'm just always going to be this way because there's always something you can do about it. So make one lifestyle choice after another and do it with support. The future of health looks like prevention. Um, it's going to be more common for everybody to have their own customized health plan. Well, our health is no different than the health of the planet. People, it's never too late to feel great. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Connecting the Dots. We are so excited for y'all to hear this episode. It's a super fun and lighthearted episode all about goats, and it's even a little educational and a little spiritual, so you're going to learn a lot, I promise. And when our guests reached out to us about being on the show to talk about the goats, we knew we had to have her because I feel like goats have been such a trending topic in social media lately, you know, with goat yoga and goat milk and goat yogurt being like the new dairy alternative and having goats as pets is a new thing as well and also painting goat videos if you haven't watched them please go watch them after you listen to this episode of course um because it is absolutely hilarious they just start running and then they just faint mid-run and then they get up afterwards they're completely fine but it's freaking hilarious so highly recommend yeah, goats are everywhere. And the first time that I was really introduced into what characters goats are was when some hilarious human remixed Taylor Swift's I Knew You Were Trouble with the screaming goat sound uh, when she's like, oh, and it's like, ah. um, that is like, I that video literally lives rent free in my head. Yeah, I think it will now, too, because I didn't know about this video until 10 minutes ago. And when Kath showed me, I literally fell out of my sleep laughing hysterically because it is so funny and works so perfectly with the song. So we will definitely link that in the show notes for you. Yeah, you if you haven't heard it and you are somewhere in our age range, I just apologize that you didn't get to experience that. Um. <laughs> So for all of those reasons that Melissa listed, we wanted to learn more about these animals and really find out why they are becoming so popular and trending everywhere. And there was legitimately no one better to learn from than Cora Moore Bruffy, our guest this week. Cora Moore Bruffy is the CEO and founder of Fairylands Farm. Fairylands Farm is a small nonprofit care farm in Baxter, Tennessee. The majority of the animals on the farm are actually rescues, and their mission is to create, create a safe space for humans, animals, and nature to heal. They offer animal education, goat therapy, and animal Reiki. Cora explains that goats provide us with many physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual benefits 
as well as enhance our mindfulness practices, make excellent pets, and are good animals for alternative therapies, as well as animal-assisted interventions, all of which we dive into during this episode. So we don't want to give too much of this stuff away. We'll let you enjoy the episode. But before that, we're going to get into our partners. So one of the reasons that we love Energy Bits is because each tablet is full of nutrients that come straight from the earth. Energy Bits tablets only contain one or two ingredients, spirulina and chlorella. The tablets are perfect to add to our smoothies, lattes, trail mixes, and more to feel confident that we are getting all the amazing benefits and nutrients that we need to stay healthy. So to purchase spirulina and or chlorella Energy Bits tablets, head to the link in our show notes and use code CTD to get 20% off your order. Something that I hate about dairy-free milk is that it doesn't last long and it isn't easy to store and even bring places. But that's why I love Joy, which stands for just one ingredient. They sell the bases for dairy-free milks, so when you need your own, you just add water. And since you don't have to refrigerate it, you can take it to work, bring it when traveling, and even take it on camping trips. We recommend starting with the instant organic oat milk base and the organic almond milk base. Head to the link in the show notes to purchase and use code Kathleen Carney Wellness at checkout to get 10% off. Enjoy the episode. Well, Cora, we are so excited to have you on Connecting the Dots. When you slid into uh, the podcaster matchmaker DMs, I immediately sent it to Melissa and was like, we have to have her. This is so cool. So I know listeners are going to be so excited to learn about the work that you do. Um, But before we get into it, would love to start off with an icebreaker, um, which is what is something that you're currently reading, watching, or listening to? Well, I, I I don't really know how to quite describe the research that I'm doing on goats right now. It's a little more uh, unscientific, more kind of like esoteric type side of it. I've been really uh, obsessed lately with looking into uh, like goat to- totemism and goat symbolism and how goats have been portrayed in different cultures. And what I've really been obsessed with is looking at uh, the fairy lore, you know, those whatever these mystical nature spirits are and kind of how they relate to goats. So uh, some really interesting things have been uh, coming up there and just a lot of kind of fun stuff too, because we are fairy lands farm. So of course we have a deep connection to nature. That that sounds awesome, and we will definitely have to dive into some of those uh, details later on in this conversation. Um, oh, right, I think they will come up for sure. So let's uh, start a little bit at the beginning. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your health journey, and how that led you to where you are today? Well, I would definitely say that a health journey is a life journey. So um, first of all, I am the middle of uh, five girls. So I have two older sisters, two younger sisters. My dad was a chaplain's assistant in the army. So throughout my whole life, we, we have always been exposed to different cultures, different religions and belief systems. And uh, I, I was kind of an overweight kid back in the day. So um, our parents were always very adamant about physical health for us. And then, you know, the 80s was kind of a different time being a kid. We spent a lot of time outside and our dad would take us fishing and we lived in Germany for a little while. So we we did these cool things. They were called Volks marches. And it was basically, you just walk and hike out in the German countryside, out in nature. And so I, I don't think my parents ever specifically were like, you can find healing with animals and nature. Cause we always at least had dog too growing up, but it seemed like being in nature, being around animals, being around like, you know, cultural diversity that's just something that it's always been a part of my life and something I've always been interested in. And so 
as a kid, I always spent a lot of time outside. And then as a teenager and, and like a young adult, you know, I mean, I did the bar hopping and the clubbing thing, of course, had to, had to experience it. Right. But at the same time, I was always the one that was like, let's go camping. Let's, let's go out in the woods and like hang out and, and maybe, maybe we'll see fairies. Who knows? Let's, let's just, let's go in the woods. And, and so I've always found solace and, and kind of like cathartic healing through nature and, and then animals always having them in my life has brought me a lot of solace. So I started my educational journey in archeology span and, and because I was doing that work. I, I spent a lot of time by myself in the woods. And well, I went by myself. I mean, there were a lot of bugs and a lot of snakes and other animals that I probably saw more than people. And so, you know, just through those experience, you kind of, I, I kind of uh, uh, learned more about myself and, and just, uh, I, I feel like nature speaks to us all in its own way. You just kind of have to take that time to just kind of go out and be by yourself and listen to the messages that you can receive. And so in doing archeology, span I ended up in my thirties. Um, I said, that's when I started uh, teaching online cause I'm a college professor and I teach uh, all sorts of social science and humanities from anthropology and archeology span to psychology to like, American government and, and like Latin American government. So I, I teach a wide range of stuff, but you know, it all relates to being human and how we engage with others and just uh, learning more about ourselves. So definitely a lot of my healing journey, I've always found myself out in nature. And so long story short, I started teaching online and that just led me to traveling around the country even more. And I ended up on a little goat farm out in the Mojave Desert. And that's where I got my first baby goat. And her name was Baby. And uh, that little goat went everywhere with me. And so I, I'd always said, you know, that I wanted my own uh, farm and my own goats and stuff. And so when I got out to the Mojave, I, I started to get that experience and to learn this, these, this, um, just about these amazing animals and, and the healing that can bring to our life. So, you know, my health journey has been one that's been involved um, with animals and nature. And like I said, it's just a, kind of a part of life. So it's very much always evolving and growing. Yeah, that, I love that you've been able to capture all of your different interests and make that a part of your life, whether it's professional, personal, where you live. Um, I think that's so special and really the key to finding true happiness and success. But I know the burning question that listeners are going to have and I have is how did you start to even discover the benefits of goats? Like, where did that come from? And if you could also tell us some of those benefits, we'd love to know. Oh, see, that's what I said, you know, uh, well, first of all, I'm an airy, so, you know, goats, I have a very strong goat totem in my life already, and then um, it's so funny, because even in the Chinese zodiac, I'm a goat, so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm very much connected to these animals, and like I said, it was when I got out there to the Mojave, and I was taking care of the goats, and really interacting with them on a daily basis that I got to see their behaviors and uh, like I said just start to realize what amazing and just uh, you know cathartically healing type of creatures they are because like when it comes to animal assistant therapy dogs equines are, are most used because we have such a great emotional connection to them you know, especially dogs. I'm sure most of us and listeners, do you guys have animals? Actually, let me stop and ask you, what kind of animals do you guys have? We both have dogs. <laughs> we both have dogs. So right there, so you understand that that emotional connection, your dogs know when you're feeling down and they come to you. And I feel like, um, you know, goats have that, but at the same time, goats are considered the third smartest group of mammals because they understand complex language. So Goats are wicked smart, you guys. I mean, like I'm talking to you, they know and understand as well as you and I sitting here conversing, understand each other. And I would say they're at least at, 
adolescents because they're so funny you know they're like they're like teenagers sometimes you tell them to do something and they'll do the exact opposite just like a teenager you know and then they're like little toddle toddlers and and kids that and truly kids at times because uh, you see them they get restless like we go to town or go to do our therapy visits at assistant living homes or schools and when they're done they're just they're like human kids they're just done you can't get anything else out of them so they're really funny in that way but you know then at the same time and they really they're 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 animals of the earth and so they really teach us how to ground and connect to the earth and like i said because they're so wicked smart and they understand complex language there's there's more of kind of a mental connection to them and and it's like they just have this kind of knowing like it's very interesting to see if we run into groups of people maybe like like people who have disabilities it's very interesting to see how the goats kind of target in and, and kind of give they give those people more attention it's 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 so weird how they like understand the dynamics and they know when somebody needs them and their attention more than other people if that makes sense yeah that that does make sense that's very very interesting um so i'm curious like in these sessions like what type of I guess things do the goats too. Like if, if when you're bringing them to like assisted living centers or other other therapy sections, there you know I, I mean because uh, even though goats they are the first domesticated animal, so you know they they've been around humans for over uh, ten thousand years. They were domesticated about ten thousand years ago, so you know they definitely have a strong connection to us as humans, and so. They're kind of funny. They're still wild animals, so you never really know how they're going to react. But for the most part, they, they really like being around humans. They like getting attention and affection, and they like giving people attention and affection, too. So you definitely see that when we're out in public. Like, we, ju we just played a, an event this past Saturday, actually, over the weekend, and everybody got to come and play with the therapy goats. And like I said, you can just tell how... Sometimes they, they just, you know, they seem to just really connect with somebody and they'll go and they'll go up to that person and, and, you know, they'll sit and they'll just lay down beside the person and the person will just pat them or brush them and you can just, you know, see that that healing energy being transferred you, you know what i mean your mind's eye you can just kind of see it and feel it and, and can just tell that they're really they're really giving something to the human that that the human needs at that time you know whatever that is because i'm not nosy and be like so what's going on in your life what are the guys helping you with but you definitely see that change in people's behaviors and kind of in their energy after interacting with the goats people find it very healing and like i said the goats just have this inner knowing of what we need from them there's so much fun it's so crazy that you say that because the first time that I really understood, like, I, I, you know, you see like emotional support dogs and that kind of stuff, but like, that was kind of my baseline. And then the next time I heard about animal assisted therapy was, as you said, through horses and how the horses were able to like mimic things that were happening in people's lives and scenarios that they needed to work through. Like one story I heard someone was really afraid of getting married and somehow like these horses reenacted like a wedding. It was just crazy stuff that they so have cool. this like innate knowledge of you. And so as you were saying that, that was my only real connection of like, okay, animals do have these connections to humans and can read us and kind of understand what we need or what we're trying to work through, which I think is fascinating. Um, but what are some additional benefits of goat therapy, goat assisted therapy on either physical, mental, or emotional health? That's a great question. So first of all, when it comes to animal assistant therapy, whether we do that in a professional psychology setting or we do it more in like the way we do it here on the farm in a more holistic kind of alternative type therapy, excuse me, 
the animals are providing that comfort and support. So, you know, we rely on the animals to create that safe space. So then people feel more comfortable and they're more likely to be able to share and find healing in their lives. So by being with goats uh, physically, they're gonna help us uh, because by being with them, petting them, brushing them, feeding them, even in just their daily maintenance. It's good for our physical bodies. It's getting us exercise. It's helping with things like arthritis because it's helping flexibility. It's helping with our, our blood pressure and our blood flow because, you know, we're moving our bodies as we're interacting with them. And then, of course, that's getting oxygen of, to our brains and to the parts of our bodies and muscles that we need. So that's always good. Any really any animal that you can have in your life is going to give you those types of physical benefits. And then um, some of the goats, you can walk them. So if I put a lead in their harnesses or collars on them, you can walk them around. And then of course, that's more physical exercise that you're getting. Um, mentally and emotionally, we're kind of getting some of the same benefits there because that's when we get a little into biological psychology and we're looking at those different chemicals that we have in our, uh, in our bodies and in our brains. And so we have like feel good neurotransmitters and hormones, things like dopamine, that is, that is the number one like feel good chemical. And so by being around goats and, and other animals, we're getting a natural influx of dopamine into our system, which is a lot better because a lot of times we get false dopamine through like things like addiction. You know, we get addicted to things because it's really this dopamine fix that our brain is trying to get. So by being with animals, we're getting a natural flow of that. And then at the same time, as we're getting the more of these feel good chemicals, we're getting a decrease of the bad ones, things like stress chemicals. So by being around animals and by being around the goats and petting, petting them, playing with them, you're decreasing that. So you're bringing your stress levels down and just feeling naturally happier and uh, more content with your life. And then of course, that's gonna help with your stress too, because you know, when you have those good, um, and chemicals and those bad ones are decreased, that is just naturally gonna put you in more elevated, positive and productive moods. That, that's very interesting explaining it that way. I feel like it makes a lot more sense, like how it works um, chemically in the brain. Right. I'm so curious. Um, it's really cute that you said you could put harnesses on them and walk them like a dog. Um, oh yeah. I'm if there's like, what type of do you have to train the goats to work with like in these therapy sessions or is there any sort of like innate thing that they know how to heal? Uh, well, once again, I think that, you know, sometimes they do just have that natural ability to uh, uh, intuit what it is that somebody needs. But as far as therapy goats go, no, not every goat, it just like not every dog or horse is going to be good for therapy. Not every goat is good for therapy. That's actually on a little side note. That's something we hear a lot when I take the goats out in public. People will be like, oh, well, we have goats or the kids' grandparents have goats and their goats aren't as friendly as yours. And I'm like, well, because that is socialization. Um, most of the goats that come to the farm, they are rescue animals. And so, you know, getting them around people and used to being around different people and being out in public around like, we train them kind of like you train uh, dogs for therapy. You gotta be, they gotta be used to distractions and being in strange places. So there are about three or, four, well, about six of the goats. We have a 18 on the farm actually. So we do have six that normally go out in public. So they're the most friendly. They are the the most non-reactive as far as, you know, it can be craziness going on around them and they're still pretty calm and chill. But yeah, um, not all goats are, are capable of doing that. So it takes observing their behavior, spending time with them, introducing them to people to figure out which one is going to be the best. And now um, here on the farm, we do a little bit of breeding every year because we do do therapy with the goats. So we want that therapy gene 
spread and to them, right? So we want the goats that are the friendliest and sweetest to, we want the, those hereditary, uh, heretics, I think that's how you say the word. <laughs> you guys know what I mean? That's, a, that's as much about genetics as I know. And be like, breed the good goats and then we'll have better goats, you know? But yeah, and then um, socialization. So we don't bottle feed any of the goats unless absolutely necessary. I mean, if something's wrong with like last year, our, our therapy baby, her mama got mastitis, bad milk disease. And so I had to bottle feed her. But for the most part, we let them nurse off of their mamas. So as soon as they come out, it's very important that you are right there. And on a daily basis, you are interacting with the goat. You're teaching them a command. So like I said, goats are wicked smart. They actually excel at learning. They have great memories. And so from day one, you teach them their name. You teach them commands and, uh, you know, goats, they do, they, they learn commands like dogs and horses can. And like I said, you can walk, walk goats. And then, you know, people have used goats and they still use goats in many cultures to like pull carts and stuff. So, you know, goats are very capable of knowing commands. And uh, my number one therapy goat baby, she knows load up means get in the car. If I'm like, all right, load up, we're going somewhere. She'll go jump in the car, just like a dog. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing just socialization making sure that you're constantly interacting with them is is a good way to get them used to people and how you get them to be more uh therapeutic value do you i know on your farm you offer a wide variety of educational programs do you offer trainings to help people learn how to train goats or are there classes that people could take if they're interested in learning how to do that? That's such a great question. I'm so glad you asked that. That is something that we have just started offering our goat farm consultation services. So I do have a lot of people contacting me just asking about general health, wellness, and maintenance. It's like, we got this goat. We've never really had it. What do we do? And so I do have a lot of people. I'm, I'm always open to help people out with their animals. And um, next year, we are thinking about start introducing some type of goat um, to different types of uh, classes and workshops on goats to help people with that. Because, you know, goats are really, um they're not considered official therapy animals like horses and 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 equine uh, are i mean and dogs are and so that's one of our goals on the farm is that we want goats to get that status one day and uh so yeah so we have a lot of uh, exciting things we hope as far as just that as far as educating people on what to do with goats because oh i know what i was going to say because the rising in popularity you know it was like everybody wants a goat for a pet or in their life and and the more we can educate ourselves on how to properly take care of them then you know that's just adding more health and happiness benefits for us yeah no that's that's awesome that you're offering that sort of training and i think yeah the first time i ever heard of any any sort of like healing benefits from goats was is goat yoga and i feel like that's probably the most mainstream um idea of that and i saw that you guys do offer go yoga so i'm curious um if you could talk a little bit about how go yoga works and what some of the benefits are all right i would think that that would go back into um the spiritual benefits of goats and i think you guys asked that but i got caught up on the physical mental and emotional so when it comes to those spiritual benefits of goats goats are earth creatures you know they are very much correct connected to the earth, they're really good at teaching us how to just calm down and ground. And then, you know, of course, that helps us with um, things like mindfulness, being being present of the or being mindful of the present. It helps us with, you know, learning how to not let things stress us out as much as we normally do. So when it comes to goat yoga, you're getting all these great benefits of yoga, that flexibility, you know, the healing the the mind body connection and a lot of that is, is once again it's about that that just grounding and calming inside yourself right and so when you add the goats into that I think it's it's kind of like a 
I don't, I don't really know how to say it. I always say a double whammy, but you know, it's like you get this extra, just like poom benefit of that because you're getting all this great love and attention and kind of like sereneness that the goats are creating. Why you're learning this great mind body exercise that you can do. And so it's a little unpredictable because once again, you never quite know how the goats are going to react. Sometimes they'll jump on people sometimes they won't you know a lot of times they just kind of walk around and they'll come up to somebody and like lay at their feet and kind of just lay on their mat as they're doing the yoga and so that that's really cute too and then um they're used to i i, I do not teach the goat yoga because i i'm not capable of teaching yoga um i i just kind of corral and manage the goats during those sessions so my yoga teachers that come out the goats are are you know we've been doing it now for two years I do believe we do it about once or twice a month and so the goats are used to seeing them and when they come out the goats will come up and they kind of corral around the yoga instructor and they'll kind of sit with her as they're going through things so it's definitely just that like I said you're getting this extra added um health and wellness benefit because you're able to do yoga and learn about yoga while you have these great animals there with you and that really seems to I, I would say we get a lot of people that have never done yoga before so they're just curious as to that practice in general and then you know they're like oh do it with goats I'd love to you know hang out with some goats and see what that's about if that's a good answer for your question <laughs> oh yeah I mean, Melissa I think you need to go guest uh yoga instruct on the farm we yeah 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 absolutely I know I, I still haven't done goat yoga but I used to teach yoga and honestly teaching Ooh. goat yoga sounds way more fun <laughs> oh I'm telling you it is a good time I, I feel like more people leave the farm with big old smiles on their face talking about how much fun they had and how sweet the animals are than not you know what I mean yeah oh yeah I feel like I this might just be me but I feel like if I'm having these thoughts listeners might too but I have only like met goats occasionally at like petting zoos I'm not so super familiar with them um so just in general like what are goats temperaments like are they like like I'm just now thinking after talking to you like I'm just thinking like I want to go like with my dog Oliver like in my house we're gonna you know hang out go on walks treat him like a dog which I know is not the same so I'm just curious if you could just tell us a little bit more about like what goats are like and can they be house trained actually goats can be house trained I don't recommend because once again goats are wild animals even though they are domesticated I really don't recommend them staying in a house full time because as wild animals as herd creatures they need to be outside in nature they need to be exploring foraging and they also like to have a buddy because they're herd animals so you know they're used to having other goats around them now, at the same time, though, we do not judge a lot of people successfully have goats as pets and keep them in the house. And uh, so, yes, they can be trained to stay in a house and they can be potty trained. Now, this is kind of the funny one. Um, so goats, the, probably their schedule about every 20 minutes, they're peeing and pooping. That's just kind of what goats do. You know, generally, they're really just kind of calm and relaxed animals and and they just hang out they pee they poop they eat they sleep that's kind of a goat's life you know they they really just like hanging out um i don't know if you guys know the actress her name uh tori spelling yeah. back in the day 90210 she was on like the first 90 okay. she actually has goats that she keeps in her house and she has potty trained them so and and that's kind of the key it's like every 20 minutes you know they're going to pee or poop so you take them to the area where you want them to do that in and then some people they will put diapers on them and so they just keep them in diapers all the time but like i said but here on the farm you know because we have a lot of land for everybody to run around on and we are a sanctuary for everybody to come and live their best life we we definitely encourage more of making sure they get outside time so that would be the thing if you absolutely want to go and have to keep it in your house 
do you think of it like a dog in this sense that you they've got to have their outside time they've got to have space outside that they can go to and then like i said goats i mean generally they're very mild temper uh mild temperament animals now the bucks which are the breeding males they're not they're insane they will beat you up i've been rolled down the hill and ran by so many bugs you wouldn't even believe it they make me so mad <laughs> but the girls are really sweet and just for the most part you know they just hang out now uh when it comes to food though it's like a shark feeding frenzy because once they know you have food then yes they are like all coming at you and jumping on you and you're like whoa wait what's going on here <laughs> so that's the great thing about goats is you know they teach us how to be calm and how to ground but at the same time too they're super funny and super silly and so they teach us just to kind of slow down in life and realize that we don't always have to be serious it's okay to let loose and be silly sometimes and and uh, you know just to enjoy the little things in life that's they they sound like such fun creatures to hang out with like I just want to I want to go to be my best uh -huh. friend right now <laughs> um that just sounds so fun um I'm they curious do you have any other like fun or educational facts about goats that people might not know because I feel like you have a wealth of knowledge and with all this new research that you're doing is there any information you'd like to share hey, yes all right so let's go with uh do you ladies enjoy coffee I'm sure a lot of your audience members do like our coffee thank goats for that discovery so um of course the goat herders they uh, they knew that uh and, and uh i think uh south america is where coffee i can't remember if it's south america or south africa but wherever coffee breed naturally grows you know the goat herders they knew when the goats ate that particular plant that they would get extra hyper extra kind of crazy getting to more shenanigans right and then um just come in the age of exploration 1700s when we had colonialism and so we started to like mass produce things we discovered that oh hey th this you know plant that the goats are eating it's the coffee bean so voila so because the goats we have coffee and starbucks so thank the goats for that <laughs> unless you don't like starbucks then you know don't blame the goats <laughs> And then, um, like I said, goats were uh, the first domesticated creature, uh, animals that we have used about 10,000 years ago. That was over in about in, in kind of the Middle Eastern part of the world. So out in the desert. And it was just kind of um, by accident that goat cheese was discovered. It was kind of like they had the milk in a bag. And then because of the air temperature, it kind of curled up and turned into cheese. So I say goats were first domesticated because of their delicious dairy. And no doubt, because they do have personalities. Each of them has personalities. They, um, they know their names. They, they each have, like, we have different voices and ways of speaking, even though they all go ma. They all have their own vocalizations and way of doing that so that uh, I don't even have to see which goat it is. I can just hear and I know who it is. And um, goats, their pupils are really interesting. They do not have round pupils like most mammals do. They are rectangles, so they look more squarish. And uh, that is just something in their DNA, the way that goats evolved to where um, it's kind of a protection thing. So they have these uh, the kind of rectangular pupils and they see all around them. They have a 360 degree view. And of course that's uh, because being herd animals and so they can keep an eye on each other in the wild. They like to forage, you know, goats are, um, they're not like sheep. Sheep like to eat grass more. They're more grazers, whereas goats are foragers. They're going to be jumping up in the trees, getting leaves and getting vines and going after all the big uh, weeds and shrubberies. Oh, that's another thing. If you want to go for a pet, 
just be careful because they'll eat all your like ornamental plants and all your vegetable garden before you, your black grass will be like above your head and the goats won't touch it. You know, that's more sheep. But yeah, so they have they have this 360 degree view so they, they can see all around them. Um, back in the days of the ancient Egyptian pharaohs, it didn't matter how much gold and silver you had, goats were more valuable so i like to say you could have all the gold and silver in the world but if you didn't have any goats you were considered poor and then um even today in today's time there are a lot of cultures around the world that still use goats as a form of a trade commodity so you know goats are very valuable especially on the continent of africa there are a lot of african cultures that still really value animals and so social status and and of course your financial status is going to depend on the amount of goats you have and then um we don't eat the goats on our farm, but uh, goat meat is more consumed. Actually, goat meat and goat dairy is more consumed than cow, which, you know, we eat a lot of that here in America, but around the world, different cultures eat those. And uh, let's see what else. Oh, what do we call goats in Tennessee? <laughs> Any ideas? No idea. We call them little hillbillies. <laughs> and that that's my only joke i have there but uh it's kind of a funny one it's like yeah the goats are little hillbillies here in the south <laughs> oh, I, love it. I love it i i knew when you were when you reached out about talking about your farm and all the things that you do i was like i just need to know everything about goats i'm so fascinated so you are fulfilling my dream <laughs> and I'm just, I just have nice. so many questions for you because this is just such uncharted territory for me. Like I, as you were saying, oh, well, they don't really eat grass. My next question was, okay, well, what do they eat? And then you were just like, they forage for all kinds of things. That's crazy. And so cool. And like I said, I'm just learning so much. And something that I learned from your website was about animal Reiki and how you can use goats for that and actually melissa is reiki one certified so nice she's got a little reiki knowledge um but could you explain to us and our listeners like what is animal reiki and what are some reasons that you would perform animal reiki all right so basically reiki in general uh well let, let's 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 step it back even that Science 101, everything is made up of energy. You know, we're made up of energy. These computers we are, are on right now are made up of energy. The animals, everything is made up of energy. So Reiki is a type of energy healing. So it's, it's learning how to take the energy that's all around us, inside us, the animals have it too, and learning to channel that in a way that we can get healing in our life we can get more happiness in our life a, a better sense of well-being in our life and so the way I came across that was, was just kind of a little weird I mean I like I said I've always kind of had animals in my life and I've always felt connected to them and it wasn't until I really started getting into reading about Reiki and, and kind of, you know, thinking how to apply that to my life. And I started studying it and I was studying animal communication at the same time, too. I'll tell you guys, this is a funny little story. Yeah. So a few years ago, when I really first started getting into it, one day I got this box from Chewy and I had like all these treats for every animal because we don't just have goats. We have dogs, cats. A donkey, rabbits, turtles, chickens, guineas, ducks, you know, we got a wild, a wide array of animals. And in this box, I had like something for everybody but the cats. And so in my head, I heard this little voice go, why didn't we get any treats? And I looked down and my little cat, Gremlin, she's just giving me this dirtiest of looks. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, Grim, I, I didn't mean to, you know. So the next day I ran out and got her treats. But that was kind of the first, it was like, wait a minute, if we do pay attention, animals will give us messages. Now, of course, that's a really crazy and profound experience. You know, I had a dog for 18 years and we got to a point in that relationship where I could just think of him and 
he would be in the room or it's like, I know what he wanted. He would just send me that message because we just, we've been around each other so long, right? Yeah. So the goats are kind of like that too. You know, once again, you just hang out with them long enough and observe how they act. They, they do send you signals and messages. And for the goats, a lot of times to know that when you talk to them, they understand they have little subtlest of twitches and like their face and their nose and their eyes. And you can just see those little differences. And, and so, um, so yeah, so I started doing the animal Reiki and, and learning how to, um, like I said, channel my energy. And a lot of that has to do with meditation too. I think, I think Melissa would probably agree with me on that is getting yourself into a meditative state and the more I started doing that, the more it just seemed like the animals would just come to me when I was in those meditative moments. And so the way I like to say it there is that they're, they definitely came to me and showed me that I could use their energy or, or they used their energy to help heal each other. And so what I like to say is that it's not me. I don't do any of the healing on the farm. It's all the animals. I'm just simply the only one that speaks human. And so I'm just here to translate for them. But it definitely is that you've got to get in this meditative state. And then the animals get into the meditative state with you. And, and you know how that just plays out in your mind's eye. And you see that healing taking place. And so animal reiki, like I said, they do it a lot on each other if we go into a, a meditative practice and, and we're doing Reiki it, nobody necessarily has to be sick actually Reiki is a, a good supplement because you never want to supersede your vet right you always want to go to your vet first figure out the scientific side of it and then the, the energy healing is going to be complementary to, to that so like I said we can send that energy out if our animals are happy and healthy because it's a way to help keep them happy and healthy. Um, if they are feeling as sick or bad, that's where you know psychology comes in too because you hang out with your animals and observe them and interact with them enough. When they start acting different or get sick, you're gonna know like that, right? And so the Reiki can come in to kind of help with that, help aid in the healing process there. Sometimes you, I, I would say you get lucky and you get that message of what might be wrong with the animal that you can take to your vet. And then um, a lot of times I think it's kind of comfort for us. Once again, it goes back to, you know, interacting with animals. I, I found that the more calm and grounded I am, that the more easily I'm able to connect to them and find that healing energy. So it definitely helps in those end stages of life. I already told you guys I had an 18 year old dog. So, you know, the animal Reiki, I wasn't going to bring him back to life when he got to be 18 and he was, you know, we could tell that he was at the end stages of his life, but it was a way to send energy out to help make that transition more peaceful for him. And then for us as the humans that love these animals and have them in our life, it's a way to help us deal with that process too. So, you know, it's not this miracle cure that's going to instantly make your animal healthy. It's not something that, you know, is going to, like I said, replace your vet. It's just, it's kind of like with us, you know, you know how people say mindset, we create the world we live in through our mindset. So you think positive things, positive things happen, think bad things, bad things happen. It's kind of the same with the animals when you can put that healing energy and that positive energy out to them, they're receptive of it and they definitely reciprocate and give it back to you. Wow, that was honestly so heartwarming just hearing oh, all of that. Um, oh, thank you. No, that, that's awesome. I, I think I'm most fascinated by the fact that you were saying the animals give um, Reiki to each other and help each other heal. But I, I think we've seen like, in, like where you see like the mom, like licking her baby, like if they're like paw hurt or something. Um, but oh, I, yeah. I, I've heard of, um, I haven't tried it yet because my dog does not sit still, but um, <laughs> they rec my trainer had recommended me trying to perform Reiki on my dog when she sprained her leg. I tried it a little bit, but she do doesn't sit still during it. Um, but 
I do my acupuncturist has a cat and she's like this cat is a he like will sit like when her chakras are off or something will literally she's like sometimes the cat will just sit on my head for an hour and just knows and just starts purring yeah I'm like like this cat is a healer he just knows I'm like that's just it's wild to me um so I'm curious if do you just perform Reiki to help the animals or do you perform Reiki um on people as like offer that as a service and like use the animals to assist no I I I am just certified in animal Reiki so just doing it on animals so we do focus more on animals with that when we get to our mindfulness with goats is probably more how we we help people and and kind of uh which you know is a little bit different from reiki but at the same time there's still that energy component going in so you know with the animal reiki it is more about being in this meditative state to where we're focusing the healing energy on the animal that needs it or like i said whatever energy that animal needs we focus on that and when we do more of, of our goat therapy for humans, it is more of teaching people how to meditate and just, you know, teaching them about how, uh, you know, if things get stressful in life, just breathe, you know, something as simple as that. It's like, you, you know, things are beyond your control, but you can control you, your thoughts and your emotions and what you're putting out there. And then, you know, once again, bring that back around to the animals the animals just really help create that calm uh, uh, space and not just uh, the physical world but in mental your mental and emotional and, and spiritual body that um yeah they they definitely bring me a lot of joy and healing in my life and and so as you guys can see I'm I'm pretty kind of like passionate about helping other people see how they can provide that to them too and we do hear that a lot like I said a lot of people are like well grandparents have goats and your their their goats don't act nearly as nice as yours do and like I said that's just part of that socializing of hanging out with them enough it's like those goats would be really super sweet too if you just hung out with them enough times so so it is more directed towards the animals that we do that and then like I said we have another component that if humans want you know more of me helping them I can provide that <laughs> That's awesome. I, I just was just, as we're talking about that, I was like, one of, I think a lot of people's favorite parts about having pets is that they're just, there's no judgments. And I just felt like, as you were saying that that was just coming up for me, I'm just like, I'm sure it's such a beautiful space to be in where you're just with all of these animals who aren't judging you and you're allowed to just relax and kind of let go of everything else that's going on and be present. I can only imagine how powerful and amazing that experience is. Um, and definitely want to highlight all of the services that you offer on Fairyland Farmed. So could you explain, I know we've kind of gone through a few animal Reiki, the goat yoga, some of the educational programs, but just for our listeners, could you name any way that they could interact with you and your farm? Uh, well, like I said, we do the educational programs or uh, animal Reiki for animals, and then we do goat therapy. So, of course, goat yoga. And then, like I said, we do mindfulness with goats. And then um, in, in, in my personal life and, and journey of discovering myself and just healing my own healing journey i also do tarot card readings and things like dream interpretations and uh, the tarot card readings are kind of funny because uh, the goats i do have my my main therapy goat baby she will i'll pull the cards and put them out and then whichever card she picks is the one that i'm like here's your card so i let baby pick the cards for people and a lot of that is just um as I call it personality development because that's really what tarot is. It's these symbols and these archetypes of, of human characteristics. And so just learning 
how we can understand ourselves better and our life journey. They're just a good tool for that. And the same thing with dreams. I mean, sometimes dreams are just nonsense. It's just your brain's way of getting rid of, you know, we live in a fast paced society, especially now in modern times, and we're constantly inundated with stimulus. So sometimes our dreams are just dumping that stuff out, right? And then other times, I think that our dreams give a, do give us clues as to what's going on in our life. What do we need to heal? You know, what's stressing us out and how we can change that. So we do those types of uh, programs too. And, and, you know, our mission with the farm is just to create that safe space for healing for animals, nature, and humans. And, and we try to just combine as many kind of mind, body, you know, connection type things that we can do. And so the tarot and dream interpretations being personality develop and development, that goes a little bit more back into the spiritual benefits of goat. So they're really good at teaching us how to ground, how to center. At the same time, um, there, there's some kind of mythology or even like, like I said, some kind of fairy lore association and even fairy tale that is related to goats in some way because it goes back to teaching us about being calm being grounded to the earth you know living in the present moment and then spiritually too just that being that grounded that that groundedness that goats create they also teach us about the interconnectivity of all of life so just real quickly that's um Pan, Lord Pan, he is the uh, goat man. I'm sure you guys have all heard of some kind of goat man type, you know, part man, part goat. And the ultimate archetype of that is a uh, Pan and uh, back ancient Greece. But anyway, Pan was the protector of the goats. And just looking at his archetype, he's part human, he's part goat. He played the uh, plant Pan flute and uh, it has seven holes in it which represents the seven chakras that we have as humans and then even animals they have those main seven chakras and so pan is looked at as a uh, the creator, the destroyer, you know, he's this fun archetype, he's a serious archetype, maybe even something like a scapegoat. So, you know, just goats, there's so much different just symbolism associated with them. And then at the end of the day, you know, I feel like animals and nature were created first because they are, they are our friends, our companions, they provide us with substance and they provide us with guidance. You know, they were created first so that they can help show us the way and how to truly just live and, and enjoy being in this wonderful experience that we call life, right? Yeah, wow. I mean, it sounds like we could learn so much from uh, goats. But I mean, a lot of what you were saying too about like just personal development learning, I feel like Kath and I can very much relate to that because we just were like, we want to learn more. Like, let's become certified and let's just take a class on it. Let's yeah. get a book on it. Um, just because all this stuff is just is so fascinating and it helps us learn more about ourselves as well. Um, I do have to ask you though a little bit more about dream interpretation interpretations because I'm very intrigued by that. So how did you learn to interpret dreams? And I'm curious if there are also any, this is a two-part question. First, how did you learn? Um, and then second, are there any like common symbolisms or themes that appear in people's dreams? Okay, well, I'd say for me, it goes back to just, uh, you know, part of my educational journey and just life journey. I started out in archaeology and then I went into psychology and I first, my first experience in psychology was with the university in Boulder, Colorado called uh, Naropa. And they're the first accredited Buddhist college in the United States. And so a big part of what they were teaching us with psychology had to do with healing in nature. It was called eco-psychology. So it's about how you go out in nature and find healing, how you use nature and animals to get healing in your life. And so personally, I've, I've kind of always had, I don't like to call them nightmares, but when I get super stressed in my life, I do have a lot of bad dreams. And so just on my own, I started getting curious and looking into that. And then going into Naropa and getting this kind of Buddhist perspective on healing and this more nature 
oriented perspective i just started looking into symbolism even more and then like i said in my own healing journey trying to figure out what my dreams were trying to tell me and um we have great examples when it comes to people like uh Sigmund Freud, of course, the father of American psychology, and then uh, Carl Jung, and then um, a little kind of off the wall, but mysticism, Edgar Casey. maybe you guys, I'm sure some of your audience members know, he was one of the early mysticists, and uh, he did a lot of dream interpretation, so there's just a lot of good information that those guys did and, you know, studied in their life that helped unlock um, you know, just what our unconscious mind is trying to tell us or, you know, trying to help it. Like with the tarot cards, it's just what do you need to focus on in your life to help give you ultimate happiness, wellness, and well-being. And so, yeah, it just kind of came up on my own. And then through word of mouth of me doing it for me, I do it for friends and family. And then in teaching in my psychology class, we always do dream interpretations. And then, you know, that just led to kind of doing it for other people all right so i would say um some of the most common dream symbols people have are things like flying falling being chased teeth falling out uh, being naked in a public setting and so what we see there it's it's really more of a theme of kind of dream inspired uh, scenarios i guess you could say it's anxiety so a lot of times in dreams if something is stressing us out we have these kind of anxiety type things that come out sometimes uh water a lot of people we tend to dream about water when we're in kind of emotionally unsure or turbulent states because you know water does symbolize emotions and feelings and uh, ultimately though when it comes to dream symbols it's a relationship that you have to work out with your unconscious mind you know so keeping a journal writing down what you can remember of your dreams and then looking for those patterns and being like okay well so i dreamt about water what was going on in my life at the time that I had that dream, you know? And so then you start to see, okay, well, I had this dream about water and I was at a little emotional unbalanced time in my life or something. Like I said, you know, fear of being chased by something, being a monster or something you can't even see. A lot of times that's anxiety. That's some fear that you're not really addressing in your life. And so, you know, dream symbols, we have these universal ones, but at the same time, it's a unique, you know, coming up with what that means to you personally is going to be the most helpful. But of course, we take those universal ones to help guide us into our individual kind of psyches and, and unconscious mind there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, we were both, when we saw that was a service on your website, we were both like, oh my gosh, we because we text all the time and be like, oh, we had this crazy dream. What does it mean? And then we'll go on Google and like, of course, <laughs> I think the point that you were making on the individual level is, of course, you can go on Google and it'll be like, this thing symbolizes either this, 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 or this. And it's up to you to really make that connection in your right. life and say, okay, what is going on for me? how could this make sense for me? And I feel like that's kind of such an amazing thing that you offer people, not just in interpreting dreams, but in all the services that you have on the farms. Cause I really feel like you're offering that space for people to understand what they need and listen to themselves and heal themselves or heal with the animals or just figure out what's going on or what they need or what their body is probably trying to tell them but they don't know how to listen yet yeah right no you said that beautifully can i can i get a recording of that and use that you can be our little promo for the farm because that was perfect <laughs> that's exactly what we do that was probably the best feedback i got from uh, somebody is that they like coming and volunteering on the farm because it's that non-judgmental thing you said. It's like, because you can come to the farm and you can be 
yourself. And, you know, that, that I think, is that not the reason that we're all having these, this life experience and we try to find healing in our life because we're all just trying to be ourselves and just get along and live, you know, and animals and nature are the same way. Yeah, no, I think that's just, that's beautiful. And honestly, every time I like I'm I just have my dog and she just starts barking at me and I'm getting frustrated I'm like honestly no like she's she's barking at me for a reason and she's yeah. keeping me playful and like Melissa step away from work step away from reality for a minute let's let's do something fun and it's kind of like I think we underestimate how how important having animals in our life are to kind of bring us back to that like playfulness and almost like when we were children again yeah uh, yeah so kind of want to, um, before we kind of get into our closing questions, I did want to ask once more about, we talked about it a little in the beginning, but you mentioned the connection to fairies and um, goats. So I'm curious if we could talk a little bit more about that and how they are actually connected and how fairies kind of relate to goats here. Oh, yeah. So that we could probably spend another hour just talking about that in general, right? Because it starts off with, well, what exactly are fairies? Well, who knows? But they're definitely within any culture or any mythos we look at that, that involves some type of fae. They're definitely some kind of nature consciousness, right? There, There's some a uh, 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 example of nature like a personification of that in some way and so it is pretty interesting when we look across the globe like I said of course that association of pan the goat man is the biggest one we see there and then um we also have fairy creatures that are satyrs and I like to say you have to get really lost in the woods before you finally get to where the satyrs roam because they're very elusive creatures yet very playful fun loving creatures and then it just seems like um there are just a lot of associations of just that 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 playful nature that goats have seems to relate to that playful nature that we see a lot of fairies have because you know fairies we say they're not really good they're not really evil they're kind of an amalgamation of both right they're kind of something in between and we see that with goats too as as fun and sweet and carefree as they are they're also very mischievous creatures and will cause all sorts of shenanigans just like the fairies do right so in my um what what I've been um, coming up with in my research right now is that it seems like a lot of Norse cultures just have this sort of um, connection of goats and fairies and this more protection. It's like the, the fairies hang out with the goats. They kind of protect and take care of the goats. And then once again, at the same time, it's kind of like maybe they're the ones that are whispering in the goats' ears to go do the shenanigans, you know? Well, the fairies are the ones that are like, hey, you know, there's food over there. If you just go open the door, you can gorge yourselves kind of type things there. So very interesting. And like I said, I'm still very young and a lot of that. And uh, it's just uh, some cool stuff. And then um, that whole kind of animal totem type connection there too of just like these characteristics that goats have that that can teach us more about um just us as human beings and how we relate to the world so lots of interesting things I hope one day I'm like I don't know if I just need to write my own book about goats on all of this or what I'm not sure but you know definitely interesting to look at that and then you know I do a lot of stuff with just the science psychology side of looking at goat behavior too so I enjoyed the funness of, of uh, being a little silly and looking into how fairies relate because like I said I've spent a lot of time in nature in my life and I can't always explain some of the experiences that I have and I believe that nature speaks to us all in its own way and all I can say is maybe I was just crazy enough to listen to this message in nature of live for the animals take care of the animals talk about the animals I don't know <laughs> call it crazy call it genius I'm not really sure <laughs> I love it and I think you have to write a book that is a must do by you and it's funny because a, such a theme, not purposely, but just this season has been like, what is, we've asked so many people, like, 
what is some advice, which we will ask you in a moment. Um, but so many people have said, like, be in nature, go on a hike, have a pet for a wide range of different reasons. We interviewed somebody who talked about ADHD and was saying pets are one of the best things. We interviewed a forager and he was like talking about how it's good for your blood pressure and your balance and your aging and all these different things. But that's just like what we keep coming back to this season is getting back to nature, getting back to the basics, listening to your instincts. And I think that there's definitely a reason that retreats are typically outdoors because I think no matter where your mind is and if you're as open-minded as I think all of us in this conversation are like I think we can all agree that like nature helps us find peace whether you think that's through messages that you're getting whether it's through calming your mind whatever it is I think that it's just such a profound experience and so I'm so grateful that you listened and that you're sharing (laughs) all of your wisdom with us and our listeners because it's such it's just such important reminders I think I agree with you on that and like I said I think animals and nature were made first to to help us as human beings to truly experience the just multitude and beauty of uh, this life and all the different realms of existence that uh, work together to make this life up right definitely um All right, so we have our last few closing questions we can ask you. Um, Our first one is, what's one piece of advice you'd give to someone starting their health journey today? Oh, don't give up. Uh, Your your health journey is a life journey, so it's not not a marathon, you know. It's not something you're going to accomplish overnight. It's a process that takes persistence and patience and perseverance. Um, Be kind to yourself. You're not you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. So, you know, don't get down on yourself when you have bad days. Realize that's just part of the process and, and keep moving forward in those positive and productive ways. Love that. The second one is what do you think the future of health looks like? Oh, I'm so glad. I think you already answered that for us. So you said you guys keep coming back to this, this, you keep getting that message of it's in nature, it's with the animals. And I do think that we're going to still see a lot of advances medically as far as healthcare goes in our lifetime. But at the same time, there does, especially since COVID, there has been more of a calling, I think, of getting back to our roots and getting back to the earth and finding more of those nature, uh, natural kind of holistic types of healing. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you on that. Right. And our last one is, since this is connecting the dots, can you tell our listeners how they can connect with you, where they can follow you on social media, if they want to take some of your services or just learn more about goats? Yes. Or volunteer. Yeah. We didn't even touch on how people can volunteer with you. Oh, yeah. Right on, guys. So, all right. So, our website is fairylandsfarm.org. And we do spell that funny. So, I'm going to spell it for everybody. It's fairy with an E. So, it's F A E R Y L A N D S and then farm, F A R M dot org. So, that is our official website. And then, um, we mostly post on Facebook and Instagram, but we got the Twitter and the TikTok and YouTube too. I, I actually, um, I, I do most of the work because I'm physically here on the farm with the animals every day, but we do have a board supporting us because we are an official non 501 C3 nonprofit. So we have a board that helps out. I have people who help out with social media, but uh, Facebook and Instagram, other than our website are really the, the top places you can keep up with us we post all the stuff we're doing there post a lot of pictures of the animals of course and uh, October is coming up so it is the goats have officially dubbed it goat a ween month so we're gonna have a lot of cute pictures of goats in their Halloween costumes all month next month (laughs) 
<laughs> but yeah, and then it's on our website is where you can find our uh, our calendar. And we actually, we do events for the public. We do private. If you want to schedule a private session, you can come out to the farm. And uh, on the website, you can always go to the contact um, uh, button and uh, send me an email. I'm always happy to answer emails about any questions anybody has about our services. And then, yeah, like I said, getting people set up to come visit the farm or to do a virtual uh, type of event because we do a lot of virtual stuff too. Oh, that's amazing because I know not all of our listeners are in Tennessee. So that's so exciting to hear that they can get involved as well. And Melissa and I need to plan a trip, I think. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come visit anytime. We'd love to have you. Yeah. I we would love to come. It just sounds so amazing. It's like such a fun and relaxing and healing place to be. So we will definitely make sure that we promote all of your services and the amazing work that you do in the, the show notes and in our resource guides and everything. We're just so grateful to have learned from you today. This was, we were both like, we don't know anything about this, which makes it that much more fun and exciting. So thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. I was very excited when you guys responded and, and were definitely interested in learning more about the goats and the things that we do because it's just any way that we can share about the healing and, and love that the animals have to give. You know, I'm, I'm always so grateful and appreciative for people to letting me have their platforms to share that. So thank you so much. And I've, I've really enjoyed this. I hope you guys have too. Oh yes, God. definitely. This is a great conversation. Oh, <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this episode of Connecting the Dots. If there was something that resonated with you or you simply enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend, leave a five-star rating and written review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you can be the first to know when a new episode is released. And if you'd like to further support us, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow the show on Instagram at connectingthedots.podcast on both platforms. We're also on TikTok at Connecting the Dots Podcast. We have intentionally curated resource guides that go with every episode to give you the tools, resources, and information you need to make tangible changes at home. You can purchase these guides at kathleencarney.com slash resources. If you would like to work with me directly, you can also go to kathleencarney.com slash services and book a free discovery call to decide which service is right for you. Make sure you follow me at Kathleen Carney Wellness on Instagram and TikTok. And I'm Melissa Chamis on Instagram and the Lazy Yogi separated by underscores on TikTok. And we'll link all this information in the show notes to make it easier for you. We appreciate your continued support and look forward to hanging with you next week.